Starting where we left off on the last video, let's look at the adjusting process. We're going to go from the unadjusted trial balance we had previously to the adjusted trial balance. Here we have the unadjusted trial balance and then our month end journal entries. We need to recognize all revenue and expenses before the financial state financial statement date, which means we will have to accrue and bring the financial statements up to date, primarily expenses. Remember the hallmark of an adjusting journal entry is that it affects both one balance sheet account and one income statement account. So in this instance we had prepaid insurance which represented 24 months of insurance. One month has passed at month end or by the time that we're getting ready to prepare the financial statements. So we would take the $2,400 that we have in prepaid insurance divided by the 24 months it represents and each month $100 will have expired in relationship to prepaid insurance. Um, we'll also look at supplies. We're treating supplies as an asset uh, saying that they're going to benefit future periods. So the supply count at month end reveals $8,670 worth of supplies that have not been used. Our supply balance, our unadjusted supply balance is 9720 so if we take the general ledger amount and subtract out the count, this means that $1,050 worth of supplies must have been used during the month. Next, let's look at depreciation. Um, our equipment um, salvage value is $8,000. Our equipment cost is $26,000. So cost minus salvage values equals our depreciable base and that's what we'll use to depreciate. So if we'll take the $26,000, subtract out the $18,000, I'm sorry, the $8,000, and that will yield a depreciable base of $18,000. Now our equipment will be in use for 48 months, and we're going to look at this on a monthly basis in order to be able to take into consideration whether or not we have partial year uh, depreciation. So what we'll do is we'll look at how how many months have elapsed between financial statement periods in order to determine how much monthly depreciation we should be taking into consideration when we do an adjusting journal entry. So here we have $18,000 as our depreciable base divided by 48 months and this is $375 a month. And in our instance, the example that we're using here, one month has passed at month end. Next, let's look at unearned revenues, and it represents a 60-day contract. And remember, it's a liability representing monies that were paid to us for which we have not performed services yet. So the client could ask for its money back, and it represents $3,000, and it represents also a 60-day contract. Five, five days have passed at month end by the time we're getting ready to prepare financial statements. So if it was $3,000 and it's a 60-day contract, this means $50 we are earning each day we work on the contract. At month end, we've worked on five days, so our adjusting journal entry will have a value of $250. Next, let's look at an accrual for wages payable. Uh, employees earned $700 for a 10-day work week. Three days have passed at month's end since the last time they were paid, so we will have to accrue for three days of employee um, salaries that have taken place. So $700 they get paid for a 10-day work week. So 700 divided by 10 means they are paid $70 per day. Um, their three days have elapsed and so it will be $210 will be the adjusting journal entry. Uh, next, let's look on at the fact that the company is working on a job that has not yet been completed and not billed but has worked for 20 days on the contract at month end. The company is paid $90 per day for 20 days so it's going to recognize uh, revenue and receivable in the amount of $1,800. So let's look at these adjusting journal entries and what they would would look like. So here we have $100 that we're recognizing. So we're going to be debiting an expense 
and crediting prepaid insurance. So $100 has lapsed, so we're going to recognize the expense that helped us generate our revenues this month. We had an insurance expense we have to recognize, and also crediting prepaid insurance means the balance in prepaid insurance is going down. Next, we want to recognize the amount of supplies that were used in the current month. So we're going to recognize the expenses of the supplies that helped us generate this month's revenue and also the fact that our supplies have gone down by $1,050. Next, we want to have our depreciation expense recognized, and we also want to credit accumulated depreciation in order to um, adjust our books for the depreciation that has transpired. Next, let's look at our unearned consulting revenue. We have um, earned um, consulting revenue, so we're going to be crediting it in the amount of $250, and we're going to be decreasing the liability. Since a li it's a liability, it would be credit-based. Therefore, our adjusting journal entry to decrease it will be debit-based. Next, let's look at our salary expense associated with generating this income for the month and the fact that we, still, we have a salary payable of $210 at month's end. And next, the accounts receivable associated with the $1,800 of revenue that we've earned but not yet billed. So let's look and see how these adjusting journal, injure, ugh, adjusting journal entries will integrate with our unadjusted trial balances. So these balances that I have here at the beginning are all of the unadjusted trial balances. So those are all of the unadjusted trial balances. So now let's look and see how these affect and bring us down to an adjusted trial balance. Well, in this instance, we are looking at $100 of uh, the prepaid insurance that is elapsed. So this is the expired portion. This is the unexpired portion, $2,300. So that will be our adjusted pre balance and prepaid insurance. And we're also recognizing insurance expense in the amount of $100. Next, let's look at supplies expense. Our supplies were 9720 We've used up 1050 This brings us down to our account, which we counted when we counted the supplies of 8670 So it makes sense that we're bringing that balance down to the actual account that we have on hand, and we're also recognizing the supply expense. Depreciation, we are um, crediting accumulated depreciation, and we are debiting depreciation expense. On our consulting revenue, we did owe the client $3,000 if we hadn't performed services, but we performed $250 worth. So now we only owe the client, if we were to stop work on this project, $2,750. We originally had consulting revenue of $5,800, but now with this adjusting journal entry, we're going to recognize an additional $250 that we have earned with respect to the unearned consulting revenue, and so now our consulting revenue will go up. Next, let's look at our salary expense and salary payable. We're going to recognize the salary payable, credit it, and also debit the expense, so our salary expense has gone up for the month. Accounts receivable, we're going to recognize the accounts receivable associated with the contract that we worked on. And then also, too, that our consulting revenue has also gone up. So now our consulting revenue in total, our adjusted balance, will be $7,850. Now let's look at the ending adjusted balance for each one of these accounts. So now I just have it in abbreviated form, and now we'll see how it integrates with our adjusted trial balance. We can see that each one of these accounts have now been updated based upon our adjusting journal entries in determining what exactly we have by way of an adjusted trial balance.